Welcome to Holistically Speaking. I'm Hilary Russo, Certified Holistic Health Coach and Health and Wellness Journalist. This is an empowering place to explore self-awareness, self-love, and transformation through health, healing, and humor. By sharing life-changing experiences, knowledge, and guests with varied expertise, we'll explore who we are, how we got that way, and what it takes to be a happy and healthy grown-up. Mind, body, and spirit. I'm glad you're here. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. A question for you, as always. What are the signs of a toxic relationship? Would you even know what to look for if you were in one? Studies actually show that most people have experienced toxic relationships or even narcissistic behavior in their lives, both personally and professionally. And the energy around narcissism can be quite traumatic. Truth be told, I've been through it. And it's one of the reasons why I do what I do today. It's why holistically speaking is part of it and why I surround myself with people like this week's guest. So my guest this week is Ronya Frazier. She is part of that club as well. And I know Ronnie from our work as Havening Techniques practitioners. Her work and her journey is quite extraordinary, and you'll hear about that in just a second. But this rock and roll coach, this rock star, is an internationally certified and award-winning trauma recovery coach. She's an author, a speaker, and one of the leading experts in the field of narcissistic abuse recovery. She works with women all across the world to help them heal and recover who they were always meant to be by using clinical hypnotherapy, neuro-linguistic programming or NLP, havening techniques, and of course, coaching. And Ronnie, where were you when I needed you? That would be the big question. (laughs) So I'm so glad that you are here and you are sharing with the Holistically Speaking listeners. It is a pleasure to have you. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Mm, it is, it's, it's really, this is something I've really been looking forward to as, as I mentioned, you know, with us both being practitioners and knowing each other just from the Havening Techniques world, um, watching you and hearing you speak during our conference and really honing in on narcissistic behavior and recovery, which can be, as mentioned, so traumatic. I, I would love for listeners to know your own journey and share a little bit about yourself. Well, where to start? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I know your background being yeah. in the music industry. I right. mean, you haven't been a practitioner and in the emotional and mental health field for your entire career. So right. a lot of us have these different journeys. And that, I think, is what makes each person on the show so genuinely just the uniqueness of your your from point A to point B. And um, it's a growing process. So that well, let's start there because... Um, this this is a this is a little different. Yeah. So um, the thing with narcissistic abuse is that it's it's really a life long journey until you get to the point. But there will be this one particular moment that basically brings you to your knees, which mm-hmm. then you know you have to you have to reassess your life. You have to just you know check in with yourself and and you know it's basically like this wake up call. So. That happened to me uh, about five years ago. So as you said, back then I was working uh, in the music industry. I was living in LA. I had a very successful career. I um, you know, had a nice house in the Hollywood Hills and living basically this whole California dream. So from, from the outside, nobody would have ever known that anything wasn't perfect you know, and, uh, but on the inside, it was a very different story. So I, as I said, I was, you know, working, I was very successful and, uh, I was highly functioning as I always have been. And, uh, I had been single actually at that point for probably two, three years, uh, after my divorce. And, uh, yeah, I was introduced to, 
a guy through a mutual friend and you know I mean when you're introduced through a mutual friend your guard's already down right it was like oh you really Mm -hmm. have to meet that guy and he's from England and you're gonna like him and you know because I used to live in England and I'm back in England now and um, so we were introduced and within like the first moment I saw him he did absolutely nothing for me like Mm -hmm. nothing at all Um, but within a very short period of time, meaning days, he basically became my everything. Mm. And, you know, I had never felt that way before. He was so charming, so caring, so loving. He was actually the one who taught me affection, I guess. Mm. And if you ask my ex-husband, he still to this day calls me the ice queen. (laughs) (laughs) I I guess I was, you know, and then Mm. I met this guy and he basically taught me what affection was. And I'm actually a very affectionate, um, touchy feely kind of person, you know, but I guess I needed that guy to kind of unlock that. Um, and I guess that's where it's it's like an addiction, you know, that's because they give you all of this, the love and the affection and the touch and, you know, saying the right things and, all of that. And then they take it away. And at that point, I had no idea what had hit me. It was literally within um, 45 days of meeting him, not even dating, 45 days of meeting him. I went from being highly functioning, um, very independent. And as I said, you know, successful and strong minded and all of that to uh, straight into uh, ER. And yeah. Uh, so I had no idea what had hit me at the time. And from that point onwards, it just basically went downhill in the sense of my mental health, um, was declining more and more and more, uh, which was also something I had never experienced before. I had blackouts. I had anxiety 24 seven. Uh, I, I literally couldn't remember things and everything I thought I remembered didn't seem to be true. And, you know, because what they do is they, they, um, use certain tactics, techniques, Mm -hmm. um, to, to keep you off balance. And I'm pretty sure we'll talk about that in a bit more, more detail, Mm -hmm. but it literally overnight, I went from being this really highly functioning, self-sufficient, independent, strong, uh, woman that I've always been to not being functioning at all. Uh, funnily enough, except for when I went to work, because I was still doing my work. Um, so I was head of finance at the time. Uh, and, uh, nobody would have known that something was wrong. So I was still highly functioning at work, uh, which I think looking back now is actually what probably kept me alive and partially sane, you know, because mm-hmm. you have this high profile job and you have to show up no matter what. And that's what I did. And I also did an MBA in that time, which looking back now is absolutely unbelievable. Like I have barely any memory of 2015, um, because a part, maybe I should mention it, a part of the, the abuse was actually that, uh, he put me on drugs, which I didn't know. So he was mm. liking my drinks and that's what accelerated, you know, the blackouts, the anxiety, the withdrawal symptoms, all of that. So I have not that much memory of the whole year of 2015 when that happened, but funnily enough, I, you know, did my job as if nothing happened and I did an MBA at that time as well. So that's, that's quite something. (laughs) I I would have to, I I can't even comprehend that. So you were given some kind of drug and narcotic, yet you were still highly functioning at work, doing your work, which is, you know, working in the area you were in. It's not that you just show up, clock in and and clock out. I mean, there, that was a high profile job. And I feel that we're seeing a lot of women, I'm going to focus on women right now, women who are very highly uh, functioning and, and are top of their game. And yet, personally, there is so much trauma and hurt uh, that they're able to separate the two some, but it does catch up with you. Oh, it does. It always, it always does. And the work part is also, I think in the beginning, a like first it's what keeps you alive 
but then it's also um, a form of denial, you know, because after I had left LA, I literally dropped everything. And with the last strength I had left, I, I went on a plane and back to my parents in Germany. And um, so leaving my California dream behind mm -hmm. because it had turned into a nightmare, right? So what did I do instead? I mean, it's like a puzzle piece, right? Puzzle pieces you have to put together. So when it first happens to you, you don't understand. And now it's a bit different because there is a lot of um, content out there, which there wasn't a few years ago. Mm. But uh, I was trying to put the puzzle pieces together, but instead of actually focusing on my healing, what did I do? I went back to London and got my next high profile job. So I would you know, split my time between London and Boston, always flying back and forth. And because, you know, if you work and mm -hmm. if you're so busy all the time, you don't have to deal with your own stuff, right? No, no, totally. And Distraction is such a huge oh, part absolutely. of it. Absolutely. And then it always catches up with you because, mm -hmm. you know, you just need to pay attention. There is no way around it. And as you rightfully said, now, more and more women are coming forward and we can see that it's actually really, you know, highly functioning, successful women uh, who no one would ever put in that box of, you know, that woman that allows herself to be treated that way. Mm -hmm. Because there are such strong women. You know, I just recently read um, Mel B's book, Brutally Honest. I don't know if you've read it. And there was so much in there that just resonated with me because it's such a parallel to my experience as well. Of course, it's hers, you know, and of course I have mine and somebody else has theirs. But at the end of the day, the funny thing is that all of those stories are straight out of the movies. Yeah. But the outcome for the survivor the the symptoms we're experiencing the challenges we're experiencing are actually all the same and so are all the tactics that were used to get us to that point um, which then in turn made makes it possible to actually heal from it as well because the healing also follows a certain pattern which is really interesting you know so you have like this really complex um, thing that has happened to you which basically literally destroys you mm -hmm. and then and it's so complex it's so deep you know the the damage course is so deep it literally changes the landscape of your brain and then funnily enough everything that then comes after for every single woman I've worked with follows the same patterns Mm -hmm. uh, I am, I'm on that page. I get it. And you get thrown a loop, you know, you don't even realize it's happening with the gaslighting and the oh, manipulation. Yeah. And uh, those are terms I don't even think I understood fully. And, and even having a background in psychology, you don't really know it until you're a case study yourself and you're out of it. Yeah. And you never know it when you're in it. Absolutely. And it's also a challenge then to, to find the support that you need because mm -hmm. you go to your friends and your family and you tell them what's happening to you, but they just look at you like, well, you know, it's just a breakup or right. time will heal all wounds. Or even you go to a doctor or to a therapist and uh, they don't get it either, you mm -hmm. know? And uh, I think that's a really big challenge. It's literally, as you said, unless you are your own case study you don't even know that this even exists, you know? Yeah. And you don't even get it when you're in it. I mean, I, in my own, um, in my own journey, I didn't, I don't think I had the kind of support that was the right kind of support as far as therapeutic going through it. Because if you're not, if you're not trained and, and have an understanding for narcissistic behavior and the gaslighting and the manipulation, even that person sitting across from you trying to help you, and even if the person's in the room with you and you're doing like counseling together, that person, you know, that that partner can can knows how to dance around the therapist as well. It's it's a skill. So if you're not skilled in it and how to see it as a counselor, as a coach, as a practitioner, as a therapist you're not serving that person well. And it's kind of going outside of your own scope of practice in a way. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. 
Absolutely. And of course, it's all well intended, right? I of mean, course, everybody yeah. goes into, uh, you know, becomes a therapist or a medical professional to, to help others. But it's literally one of those things where textbook just simply doesn't apply. And we actually still have a lot of work ahead of mm-hmm. us to actually make that happen. You know, not only narcissistic abuse, the, the whole trauma field, you know, mm-hmm. how we how we recognize trauma, how we treat trauma, because what we've been doing is very outdated. It clearly doesn't work. Um, but the whole, you know, trauma research and um, treatments, it's, it's very new. You know, so mm-hmm. there is still a lot of work that needs to happen from our end to, you know, to change the the way we do things because there Absolutely. is there is actually a way that works. You know, yeah, and and not to poo poo clinical psychology and therapy. There is always a place for every person. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there is a place, and it's important. But I I would imagine that we each can find our own way of healing. I found once I left actual talk therapy, when I was going through it, where I really thrived and started to really see how it affected me and how it was stopping me from thriving and moving forward was when I started doing uh, complementary alternative Mm -hmm. medicine techniques, the the havening techniques rocked my world, opened my eyes, having somebody, an NLP practitioner. And um, those were the things that caused me to want to go into the field because I'm like, wow, I was so blinded and I was so removed from understanding what was going on. And I wasn't myself as people were saying, you know, and I'm sure you, you mentioned you, you got that kind of, uh, response too. people like, Oh, it's just a breakup, get over it. Uh, you'll heal in time. You'll find somebody new. And it's so much more than that. Yeah. You just don't even recognize who you are anymore. So being yeah, able so to a big part of that narcissistic oh, yeah. abuse is to take that away from you, right? To everything yeah. that you are, is taken away mm-hmm. from you. And because, you know, it doesn't make any sense, but of course, in my role as narcissistic abuse recovery coach, it's kind of my job to mm-hmm. somehow explain the unexplainable, right? And mm-hmm. um, like one analogy I actually came up with, which I think will help people understand what we are actually talking about is the game Jenga. Remember the game Jenga? Oh, yeah. I think a where lot you... of people know the, know the game uh, Jenga, where you pull out sure. all the building blocks until the tower mm-hmm. um, collapses, mm-hmm. and then you lost, right? <laughs> and uh, narcissistic abuse works exactly like that, because we all have those building blocks that make up who we are, that make up how we see life, you know, and whatever it's like financial, social, relational, aspirational, you know, we all have those uh, building blocks. And what a narcissist does is literally coming in there and pulling out one building block after the other until your life comes crashing down. Wow, that's a really easy way of looking at it. I never thought of it that way, but it really does make a lot of sense because you don't realize these small little, these one little blocks that are coming out make your foundation weaker and weaker and weaker until Mm -hmm. you just crash. And that's a really good way of looking at it. However, if you're If you're mindful and your brain is strong and you understand more about this and you go and you seek the kind of help to get you through this, because you can't do it yourself. You really need the guidance. That's where you build that strong foundation. Harder to pull the block out, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a lot (laughs) of stuff that we can do ourselves, right? Yes, uh, absolutely. There is so much, you know self-help and you know mindfulness meditation yoga there are so many things you know that we can do ourselves but because it's so Mm multi-layered and what happens is it basically opens a door to probably no not probably like the most profound opportunity for you to transform your life really Mm -hmm. You know, and for that, you need the right tools and you need the right support because Mm -hmm. when you get to the point, you just don't have it yet. So that's why, no, you can't do it all on your own. You need somebody to teach you how to do it. 
you know, which mm-hmm. doesn't mean like, oh, I'm fixing someone because I'm not. But what I can offer is the tools mm-hmm. that will help the survivor, you know, do what they have to do to come out the other side. Absolutely. We we need to put the, the tools in our toolbox. It's the same way. You know, if, if somebody teaches you how to use a hammer or a wrench or a screwdriver, and then you have your own tools, you're more likely to have an ease of using those things. If you go within and you're like, all right, let me learn here. Let me process. And that's a big part of it too, is not, this is what I've, I've faced with a number of clients is that you have people that come to you and what they really want is just to heal and feel better. Sometimes they don't even want to know how they get from A to B. They just want mm-hmm. to be better, right? And you you and I probably felt that same way, you know, like just make it go away, make the pain go away. Yeah. But if you're not willing to go inward and do the work yourself and realize that you have the support of someone who's going to guide you, but truly it's an inward thing because mm-hmm. we're our, we're our, we're our own inner bully. We're our, our our own, we're our harshest judgment, you know? So if we can't really process that this is, this is our responsibility to heal ourselves, that, that's so important. You know, we don't heal anybody else. We give people the tools to heal. Exactly. So I, I think it's I, also very yeah. important to point out that what has happened Mm-hmm. to the survivor to me to you to anyone who's listening right now who has experienced narcissistic abuse it's not our mm-hmm. fault that it happened but mm-hmm. the healing is our responsibility you know so absolutely and, and that's really important because there is no knight in shining armor who will come mm-hmm. and save us there never was and I mean, it's a very romantic notion, but in real life, it doesn't exist. The only person that can actually change this is you. And then, of course, there's support available. Mm-hmm. And it might be a challenge to find the right support, but the support exists, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, as I said earlier, actually, it's the start of the most amazing liberating, magnificent journey of your life, if you allow it to be. And it has to happen. Uh, I, I can't say that I believe that at all when I've been through anything upsetting or traumatic in my mm-hmm. life. But if we don't go through it, we're not going to know how to grow from it. And it's really being aware, uh, you know, looking back on it now, and I'm sure with, you know, everything you've achieved and gone through, being able to look back, we're here doing what we're doing because of what we went through. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's valid. Every person's story is valid. And um, you mentioned it yourself. I mean, you, you say this is, uh, you know, you're helping women to become the woman they want to be, you know, and I say very similarly that we have a story, but we can rewrite the narrative. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so important that people understand that you don't have to be stuck with the story that was given to you. You can turn the page and rewrite the narrative, you know? Absolutely. And uh, on that note, I actually would like to go back to to the counseling that you just mentioned, because, yeah. yes, you know, you go there and you tell your story and you do have the right to tell your story because, you know, something really horrific has happened. Mm -hmm. However, at the end of the day, your story is still just that. It's a story. So what happens when you go to counseling, and as you know, from your own experience, it didn't really make any difference. It may have even made it worse. And the reason for that is because you go every week and you talk about the same thing every week, but our brain actually cannot distinguish whether something's happening right now or whether we are imagining it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think back over the weekend and you think about whatever, something funny that happened, you know, it still makes you laugh now if it was happening right now. And the same applies with, you know, talking about bad things, hurtful things that have happened to us because for our brain and our body, it's the same as if it's happening right now, which means when you go to counseling and you talk about it or like traditional talk therapy, you know, and you talk about it over and over again, 
for your mind and your body, it's it's happening over and over again. So basically you're re-traumatizing yourself week after week after week. But what you actually need is the tools to come out of the story and then proactively do the work that needs to happen, you know, to change the, that programming, that faulty conditioning that, you know, got you into trouble in the first place that doesn't serve you because we all have our patterns, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I said narcissistic abuse is not like that one-off experience you have. There's like that one part that happens to you and it brings you to your knees, but actually then you realize, hold on a second, actually, like for me, for example, uh, I barely had a relationship that wasn't abusive. But I never thought of it that way, you know, because oftentimes it's what we know, so it's normal. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't consider it as abusive or, you know, we would just brush it off, especially when we're younger, you know, we just brush mm -hmm. it off and carry on with our life. But that doesn't mean it doesn't get stuck. Yeah. And it's also, if you get out of something, that's the other thing. Once you're out of something toxic... Whether it's personal or professional, once you remove yourself from that kind of environment, it's very easy to go back into it uh, if you're not doing the work. Mm -hmm. And even when you do the work, you are kind of pulled back into that direction until you can really sit back and be aware and realize we have to choose to remain empty and, rather than settle for repeating those past mistakes, you know? Mm -hmm. that really takes some work because it's very easy to feel like when you were mentioning about your divorce, you got into something where you're like, huh, never had this before. This is great. But how easy we can also, you know, talk ourselves into believing that maybe this is it. Maybe this is the best I can get. Okay. This is better than the last one. So that's mm -hmm. good, but it takes so much more, you know? Yeah, but the beautiful thing is once you actually put the work in and mm -hmm. again with the right tools and, and the right support, what happens is when your inside changes, your outside will change as well, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not like narcissists disappear from the face of the earth because mm -hmm. they are everywhere and they literally are everywhere, right? <laughs> oh, I think we know so, that in, in the U.S. more than anything right now. <laughs> So it's not, it's not like they disappear or life doesn't apply to you anymore, but because you have sorted out that mm -hmm. program that was running, like for me, just as an example, um, I had this, I'm not worth anything program mm -hmm. running and I wasn't consciously aware of that program. But needless to say, if I unconsciously think that I'm not worth anything, in return, I put up with being treated in a way that I thought I deserved, which was nothing, you know, because I wasn't worth anything. And so we all have those unconscious programs that are running um, for whatever reason, you know. And uh, we are not aware of it up to a certain point. But once we become aware of it, um, and it basically it drives all our decisions, our behaviors, our relationships, everything. And uh, once we become aware of it, the beautiful thing is that we actually have the power to change it. Mm -hmm. And once you do, what happens isn't the narcissist disappear or life doesn't apply to you anymore. It's just you don't have that need anymore that was not fulfilled to start with, you know, that got you into those situations or made you stay in those situations. Um, because it's, it's a, the healing is from the inside out, right? Yeah. You, you don't gravitate to it anymore. It's yeah, almost it like it's outside you of anything, your bubble. Anything anymore. Like you can spot a narcissist and you just walk away because oh. You have nothing to give them, so they're not interested because you are not that wounded soul anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. So they can't latch on to you, but mm -hmm. they also have nothing to give you anymore because you take your validation, your love, you know, from a whole different place, which means in turn, even though the narcissists are still around, you can deal with them in a much healthier way and for sure you won't 
get involved with them again. You know, that's like one of those big fears you have when you come out of a narcissistic relationship is will the next one be another one, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, unless you do your healing, yes, he will be. But if you do the healing, your inside changes, the outside changes just as much. And even if you might get involved with one, you can spot it much easier. You can walk away much easier. You have the tools. You have built up resilience. You know, it's not that life-threatening situation. It would have been, you know, maybe a few months before or a year before. Yeah, you almost have this force field around you where you are so much more aware and it's very empowering. So the the beauty of the work, the inner work, is that you no longer are like, mm, I hope I don't get into something. You just don't get into something because it's not in your, it's not in your surrounding. No. It's not allowed within your, I don't want to say bubble, but in a way you just can see things more. And if you're, if you're in a position, because we can't avoid being around narcissistic behavior, but how you handle it, like you said, is completely different. The language we use, our responses, um, how it affects, it impacts us mm -hmm. is completely different. And that is where the true empowerment comes from. Cause it, you're just kind of, it kind of, it's just like brushing it off. Like, all right. Yeah. So yeah, it just becomes irrelevant, you know, because yeah. the, the buttons are not pushed anymore. But I'll tell you one thing I've noticed that those around me uh, felt, you know, friends of mine that are still in something that is toxic. You want so badly for them to get it you know, mm. because you've been there and it works the same with us in our coaching and our work as practitioners to, to help people through this journey. You want so much, but you realize that part of the growth for ourselves is realizing we have to sit back and be patient and realize they need to understand how to use the tools we're giving them mm -hmm. in order to do the healing. But man, friends out there listening, once you have it, it's a beautiful journey. Absolutely. It really is. It's I, such a beautiful journey. When I when I think back now, it's like, and I mean, we're talking about a span of like four years, right? Yeah. So that's not even a long time. And out of those four years, I've been symptom-free for mm -hmm. probably two now. Um, right. You know, so... If you think about it, because because we are told it's like this lifelong condition you have until the rest of your life you have to take medication and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, but actually like once I figured something out because I got really frustrated with the lack of results, uh, call it German efficiency, I don't know, um, but I got really frustrated <laughs> that nothing changed. You know, I can remember it was like probably half a year or something. I went to my weekly therapy. And I said, I need results. And she was like, oh, you have to be patient. You know, like this is just what it is now. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to accept that. There has to be something out there that can reverse the damage as effectively as it was caused. And that's when I went on that mission, you know, and built my toolbox, which then in turn uh, enabled me to build a whole program around it. But once I got that, I went from not even being able to leave the house to go grocery shopping to being symptom-free and uh, starting my first company within five months. But needless to say, I went like I went like all in, right? It was literally like, okay, like whatever now happens will happen. And I'm a hundred percent committed, come whatever may. And I basically threw myself in. And it was scary, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but my intention obviously was to come out the other side. So I did. Yeah. And uh I think it's just very important to know that there is ways to actually recover that it's not a lifelong thing i mean it's always what you make it to be right yeah. but if you don't want it to be well then it won't you yourself and we haven't really touched on this i mean you touched about you touched on being the accountant but the thing that people might not know although they can look at you and be like wow she's a she's a freaking rock star <laughs> is that 
you're called the rock and roll coach, yeah. uh, which fits you so well, just not just in appearance, but who you are. I mean, you worked in the music industry. You were around the toxic and the suicide and the mental health issues that do tend to be pretty prominent in the music business. And here you are, this high-powered accountant, not your typical accountant. <laughs> and uh, that relationship with music and corporate life and your own personal journey, I mean, you you kind of lost your identity for a while and the red hair <laughs> and the red hair. Like actually when you, when you look at photos of me, my hair, like throughout that whole journey, my hair is a pretty good indication where I was on my journey. So the red hair was always my thing. You know, it's it wasn't like a fashion statement or anything. The red hair was always part of me until I lost myself. And then I was kind of trying to reinvent myself, you know, when you want to, because there is nothing left. You look in the mirror, you can't see anything. Like you don't recognize that person looking back. And so I had like that thing where I thought, oh, I have to now create something new because I literally had died. You know, that's how narcissistic abuse feels. You are literally dead on the inside and you don't know why you're still walking and breathing. And how can you make the most drastic change? It's your hair. So I cut off my hair and I dyed it first purple, but that was too hard to maintain. Then I went blonde, but that's not my color. And then I went <laughs> silver. Silver is just a fancy way of saying gray. So when you look at the pictures, <laughs> when you look at I the call pictures, them, I call them maturity highlights. <laughs> well, yeah, but I was how old was I? I was like thirty five. Yeah. That's the stress, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I went from like being this really vibrant. Um, I, I used to be very extrovert as well, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm not anymore. Um, because I've done my work, <laughs> yeah. I, I went from being this really vibrant personality to literally being completely faded. So my, I lost my, my skin color, you know, it was all ash and my, my hair was gray and, um, yeah. So basically you could, can tell in the photos how the life literally drained out of me, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's just, that's basically the exterior. And then eventually once the red hair came back, you know, it was still a process. Um, and you can, again, see in photos, there's still some, you know, um, um, you can see in my face that I was still tortured and stuff, but the red hair was back, which means, oh, Ronnie is back, you mm -hmm. know? And um, so then I kind of rebuilt myself but it's not like I created somebody new what actually happens when you do your healing work and that's the most beautiful thing is you let go of everything that didn't serve you mm -hmm. but you get to keep everything you actually liked about yourself because if you've been involved with a narcissist the chances are very high that you are really good person, you have a good heart, um, you know, you, you have all those really beautiful qualities that did get you into trouble. Yes, but they are such a gift to have. So you wouldn't want to give all of that up because it's part of who you are. So what I then did is I kept everything that I did like about myself and I let go of everything that didn't serve me. And that's why I say when I work with people, I help them recover who they were always meant to be. Because mm. we all have this core beauty in ourselves, right? And then that's just buried under whatever many layers uh, over all those years, you know, and all of those, those experiences, the traumas and all of that. So once we remove all of those layers, what's left it's your core you know it's like this this beauty you've had anyway inside of you and um yeah and then that's what makes my work so beautiful for me you know to because i've obviously i've went through it myself and if i look at my life now three years ago i could have never imagined living a life i do now 
And when I see it in my clients as well, you know, when you just see this transformation and what's left is like, or not left, what emerges is like this really authentic being. And as I said before, you know, your inside changes, your outside changes as well. If you are authentic in who you are, mm -hmm. the whole life around you will arrange itself to, to mirror that, right? So your life becomes very authentic as well. And that's what makes life then so beautiful because it's simply just you. Mm. Where it all begins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. So as we wrap things up, what I'd love to do with you and we're going to share uh, everything with listeners as far as your website, um, the download, everything that they can uh, to get in touch with you. But what I'd love to do first is I have this thing called this rapid fire. I throw out a word and I want you to just throw back a word with me uh, that comes to mind when I use the word. You cool with that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're yeah. like, oh my God, what is she going to say? Yeah. Um, okay. So, and, and it's quick. Like, mm -hmm. think the first word that comes to mind. So here we go, real quick. Healing. Profound. Narcissism. Eye-opening. Trauma. Opportunity. Red. Power. Survivor. Thriver. Rock and roll. Life. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. You threw out some really good ones there, Ronnie. I loved it. That was great. Oh, mm. Thank you. Definitely, <laughs> definitely words to sit on, you know? I mean, that's just, uh, it's a beautiful thing when you have really very limited time to think about something and what comes to mind, it really, it really can define the moment. So I appreciate that. And what I'd love for you to do as a final note, if for those who are listening, and struggling or just tuning in, which we're always happy on Holistically Speaking to have um, new listeners and um, those who have been supporting since the beginning. What would you say to somebody who is going through something? If you had a moment to just take their hand and um, give them a little guidance in the moment, what would you share? Um, I would recommend to take a moment with themselves and allow themselves to actually go inside and just take a quiet moment to listen, you know, to, to the feelings that might be bubbling up somewhere, to the thoughts that are running through, through the mind, and to actually just see, hear, feel what this is really about. And then once you have that and get a sense of that, then you can actually work with that. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. As I said in the beginning, where were you when I was first going through this? <laughs> well, I'm here now. You are here now and we're on a journey together. I love that. I, you know, just being surrounded by those in the field and and that that's a part of it too once yeah. you are on that healing journey and on the other side you find that you let your vibe attract your tribe and mm -hmm. i'm very very honored to be a fellow colleague with you in the world of havening techniques and learning so much about other areas and other modalities that can help in the healing as well but what a pleasure having you and i i do want to mention to our listeners you know you are going to be able to have a chance to learn more about ronnie uh she has the road to recovery the road to recover me her kickstart program if um you're interested check her out on our website which is ronyafraser.com she's on facebook instagram Again, we're going to put all those links in the podcast for you to view and click on yourself. And of course, there's a free ebook download, which is very valuable, which is how to heal from narcissistic abuse, your five-step strategy to recover the true you. I'm going to go download that anyway, because yes, I think we're constantly true. learning. Yeah, it's a learning process. So Ronnie, thank you so much for being part of the podcast and sharing your story and your gift in you. Thank you so much for having me and uh, for everyone who's going through this right now, always remember you are not alone. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not alone and everything you feel is valid. Yeah.
Absolutely. Thank you, Ronnie. And thank you for listening to this episode of Holistically Speaking. I'm Hilary Russo. The show is produced by Alan Seals with music by Lip Bone Redding. And you can find me at hillaryrusso.com. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Hillary Russo. And if you haven't done so already, take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And let's connect. Until next time, be safe, be well, and don't forget to laugh. <laughs> <laughs>